So this is my freestyle drone. And over the years, I've optimized every single last detail to the point where it basically never breaks. Even on the most ridiculous crashes like this. Oh, this. Okay, krass. Oh, this. And getting to this point took a lot of testing. And not only for me, but also the whole It's FPV gang. And nowadays we all fly pretty much the exact same setup. Because this is just the best way to build your quad. And you basically never have to fix anything. You can basically just go to the spot, fly your 15-20 packs, don't break a single thing, and then do it again the next day. And if you've been flying freestyle for a little while, you know that that is just not how it goes at all. And you'd be lucky to only spend 2 hours fixing after every session. So here's all our combined research, and feel free to steal everything, steal parts of it. And even if you don't like all of this, you can also just take a couple details and improve your build quite a lot with very little effort. So what it really boils down to is three different things, which is number one, get very high quality parts for everything that is exposed. Number two, hide all the fragile parts as deep inside of the frame as possible, so they can never even get hit in the first place. And number three, tighten your fucking screws. And yeah, it is really that important to deserve its own category. And actually, let's just start with number three, because that's super easy to explain, and you can also start doing it right now without spending any money or changing anything about your build. And it probably also makes the biggest difference if you're not doing it already. So when you're flying freestyle, you probably fly a lot with bent propellers, which causes a lot of vibration. And vibration causes screws to come loose very quickly. And once the screws even slightly loose, you lose about 90% of your strength basically instantly. So just make sure to check your screws very frequently and tighten them down. I do it about every three to five packs for the main arm screws. And every maybe 5 to 8 packs for the motor screws and maybe about every 15 packs for all the rest of the screws. And if your quad ever starts flying a bit shit, this is also the first thing you should check because more often than not it's just a loose screw causing excessive noise on the flight controller. And now onto the actual number one, which is high quality components for everything that is exposed. So that would be your frame and your motors. And the reason is pretty simple but rarely ever talked about and it's material science. Because even the best designed frame or motor in the world means nothing if you cheap out on the materials. And for the motors, just take a look at this clip and I think you'll understand. So this is the iFlight. I'm gonna use one hand at the end of this thing. And just squeeze. So the black eye flight. It looks. Oh, this is actually quite a bit tougher than the eye flights. And this one. I can't even bend it with one hand. Use two. Oop. <laughs> yeah, I, I bent it a little bit, but I used two hands and full force and still barely made a difference. So I hope that shows it. But carbon fiber is a bit more complicated to explain because carbon fiber really needs to wear out first before it starts cracking. And just flying into a wall two or three times means absolutely nothing. And instead you should be looking at a long period of time and hundreds of crashes. And the most reliable way to do that is to just look at other people's frames and to see how fucked up they can look while still flying great. And I guess the same also applies to motors, but more so the frame. So this one has been my main quad for quite a while now. And you can probably guess how many crashes it has been through. And during that time I think I've only broken two arms and nothing else. And at this point it's probably due for full frame replacement, but it still flies great, so I'm just putting it off and being lazy. But yeah, on to the next point, which is put all your fragile parts 
as deep inside of the frame as possible. So that would be your camera and your camera lens, your receiver antennas like your Express LS, your VTX antenna, your XT60 connector, and your balancer connector on your LiPo, and I guess also any other small electronic parts that can break easily. So your camera or camera lens should be as far into the frame as possible while still not having your frame in view. So on the arrow it looks like this. And this is the perfect depth for this camera FOV. And this makes sure no matter how you crash, it will never hit your camera. Unless you fly straight into a nail or like a pile of rubble, but I guess you can't really do anything about that. Then your receive antennas. They should not be anywhere outside of the frame. So I like to mount mine on the arms with a little tape or zip tie. But that's only because I use diversity antennas. But if you use a single antenna, you can also use this awesome side mount on the error. And the reason I'm using diversity antennas is not because of range, but it's just an extra backup just in case I ever cut a cable. Then next up your VTX antenna. And for that I designed this little 3D print which mounts your antenna on the side where it can basically never get hit by anything unless you get really really unlucky in a midair. But except for that it basically never breaks. And actually if you buy any frame on the It's FPV website you can use my code VO and get two side antenna mounts for free. Just put them in your cart and apply the code at checkout and they're gonna be free. But anyways, on to the next one which is your XT60 connector. And a lot of frames mount these to the frame somehow with a print. And I think that's really stupid and what you should be doing instead is just mount it out the side and put it under your LiPo strap where it can basically never get hit or get pulled out by a branch or something like that. And especially in combination with the sticky rubber pad and the LiPo straps, I basically never eject LiPos ever. And last but not least, for protecting your balance connector, I like to use the little rubber band and wrap it like this. And I don't think I've broken really any balancers since I started doing that. So it might look a little goofy, but it definitely works. Oh, and I almost forgot one important thing about LiPos. Most good LiPos have a little metal shielding on two sides of the pack. And you really need to make sure to orient your battery in a way that these are on the top. So don't lay your battery flat where all the cells get poked super easily. And instead let the metal shielding take all the impacts. Because it really doesn't take much of an impact to start a battery fire if you orient your battery the wrong way. And you may have noticed that I'm not running any TPU protection anywhere. And that's for two different reasons. First is I'm not really breaking my motors anyways. So why bother? And second I just prefer the minimalistic look which is also why I'm running three screws in my motors and this printed camera mount because that's just less parts and less stuff that I have to worry about. So with my camera mount it always keeps the exact 20 degrees of tilt and it also keeps the perfect distance so I never smash my lens. And I also just hate dealing with these tiny screws which always strip out or come loose and it changes your camera tilt. And with this it just always stays perfectly locked exactly how I want it.